As some of you know, I just came back from the 2018 Experience PRS event. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you everything I experienced and learned at the event in under five minutes. The first day was Friday and we were uh, very lucky to get a tour with Jack, the COO of Paul Reed Smith. One of the things that happened at the event was Jack showed us all of the woods they used to make the guitars. And I asked him a very specific question. I said, have you ever tried using a particle board or other type of man-made compressed materials, composites, anything else other to see if there's some benefits to that? His answer I thought was amazing. He said, no, we've never tried that, but he gave me the reason why. And he said, good ingredients do not guarantee a good guitar. In other words, they can use the best materials, but that still doesn't ensure them a great guitar. The experience and design and the way that they build the guitar is more important than the components and the materials. That's the most important thing. And we get that right. Why use substandard materials? Why use materials, why not use the best? In other words, if you're designing the best, you're building the best, why not just use the best materials? Now, the second thing we did on the tour was we got to see the private stock guitars and how they're built. So is that snake, is that carved into wood or is that uh, something laid it's on top? It's carved into the wood. It's uh, Floyd Schultz. He does a lot of our carvings, actually all of our carvings. We saw a custom eight string semi hollow being built that was pretty impressive. And a concept guitar that is a hollow body. Wow. And it's gonna have no magnetic pickups in it, but we're building a bridge that'll be a two piece bridge that'll have our piezo saddles in it with a blend on the pick guard with a microphone inside. And I just wanna see what happens. It's a lot of, what would that sound like? And just wondering, and then figuring out a way to do it. Now, my favorite part of the tour is when I told Jack that I really thought it was impressive how they were one of the first companies to put the name of the factory that builds their import guitars. And Jack's answer, I thought, was very powerful and important. He told me it wasn't just about being transparent with the guitar community about where these guitars are built. It was actually about giving the manufacturers that built those guitars some ownership. In other words, if their name is also on the guitar, they are going to take extra steps to make sure that guitar is built well. Another thing that happened at the event was I got to meet some great Paul Reed Smith employees, including Matt Ariza. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, if you're a PRS fan, it's because I own a Custom 24 and Ariza Verde. He is the stainer who stained that color. Now, Matt Matt Ariza is not just known for the green Arise Verde stain, he's actually known for Blue Mateo, because he's <laughs> Mateo, Mateo Ariza. Now he's not the only one. Trampus is another employee at the factory who's responsible for a very famous Paul Reed Smith color, Trampus Green, which was inspired by his green Kia Soul. And all of this I thought was very exciting because you're immediately immersed into their culture, their guitar culture there. Now the next thing that happened was the dealer event. Basically what happens is large dealers that come to the event to buy the PRS guitars and then sell them to the, to the people that come to the event are shown where the guitars are and then they run to them and buy them as fast as they can. Because these are three to ten, twelve thousand dollar guitars and they're just pulling tags as fast as they can and buying them. And I can understand why because later we saw an the event they sold a huge portion of those guitars. Next I got to hang out with Paul Reed Smith himself. Now this wasn't really an interview, this was a short chat in his office. So this community event, what do you perceive, because not the dollar amounts of sales or anything, what do you perceive the value to Paul Reed Smith guitars? Are you kidding me? No, no, I'm... That, how long did it take you to come around? Oh, uh, 10 years. Okay, so I think some of these people are just coming around too. Another thing at the event that was really shocking to me was the massive amount of John Mayer guitars in the factory. Everywhere you looked, they were making John Mayer Silver Skies. We even made a comment in the tour like, this is really the John Mayer PRS factory. And this factory has really been humming for the last two years. The employees we talked to said that they've been working mandatory overtime for about two years now just to keep up on the demand. And a second shift was recently just added to kind of alleviate some of those strains. As you can see, beautiful guitars, fantastic fantastic people, an amazing event. And of course, the only way to end a video like this was with a barrage of beautiful Paul Reed Smith guitars.